this is going to be the last lesson in this series, I'm going to talk about something called the Blues Scale. Uh, I've mentioned before, as I've been going through, I've sort of called this exercise a 12 bar blues in the key of A. I haven't actually played the Blues Scale yet, we've been looking at, as you know, something called the Pentatonic Scale, the 5 note Scale. So I've left this to last for a reason. I said in a previous, uh, in a previous video, the reason I've used this 12 bar blues is it's a great vehicle for an introduction to, to lead guitar. Whether or not you're into blues music style or, or not, it's one of the simplest ways, it's certainly the easiest way I've found to get into the idea of playing a little bit of lead guitar, a bit of improvising, getting your, your head around the idea of using a scale that fits with the chords that we're playing underneath. So that's the reason I've used this blues example. Now, I'm going to step it up a little bit, only a tiny little bit. The pentatonic scale we've played, by adding one note to that scale, so everything you've learned already is great, I'm just going to introduce one extra note, and that will make it into what we call a blues scale. Now, if you hate blues, if you're not into that sort of music or that sort of sound, probably skip this because it's not going to be of that much interest to you, unless you just want to learn another scale for the sake of learning a scale. So, totally honest up front there. With the examples I've been using, the, the backing tracks and the, uh, the chord progressions, this blues scale will sound better, will give a bit more flavour to your playing over those. And as I say, all we need to do is add one extra note, which is, uh, is super simple. Before we go into it, I want to make sure that, um, just to be clear, I'm not replacing the scale that we've learnt. This pentatonic scale is a scale in its own right and it works across a lot of different types of music. So think of that as being its own thing, a pentatonic scale. I'm not adding to it and replacing it. We're doing something that's a bit different. So then we're going to end up with two scales now. Our pentatonic scale, which we'll think separately, and our blues scale, <clears throat> which will be separate again and be more suitable for playing if you want to get that blues kind of feel. So we're not replacing what we've learnt, we're adding what we've learnt and we're going to think that split down the middle, we're going to think of them as two separate individual scales. So remember the way that we've learnt it previously, the pentatonic, in this case in A, which we did. So we're going to carry on remembering that and we're going to use that in our playing, in our lead playing, our solos are going forward. So that's a separate thing. Our blues scale is going to be a different scale. So if you haven't learned any scales, you've learned one with the pentatonic, and now you're going to learn your second scale, which is a blues scale. As I did before, I'm going to put the, um, the diagram of the blues scale up for you so that you can see the pattern of it rather than me talking you through the notes because again, we don't want to be playing it just in, in, in sequence. It's a bad habit to get into. It's better just to see the shape, visualise the shape, the shape, how it looks, just like we did before with the pentatonic, and that'll, that'll make you playing better in the long run. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add an extra note to the scale, so the pentatonic that we, that we know. I'm playing across all the six strings here, because we've done that already. Should be used to using that to improvise over the backing tracks or along to another player playing along with the chords. For the blues scale, the note that I'm going to add is actually in the theory, the music theory world, the note is called a flattened fifth. So I'm going to play from the bottom. Normally I play those are the notes of pentatonic. I'm going to add that note. Doesn't sound brilliant, does it? That's one of the keys. That's one of the tricks in in this scale. The added note is what we sometimes call perhaps a passing note. We use it sometimes sparingly. It's not maybe something we want to linger on all the time, but when used correctly, and I can't tell you sort of when to use it. I can't say or use it in the third bar. Count twenty seconds, then use it. I can't tell you that, it's a case of using it by ear and throwing it in to make a little bit more flavour on the music. 
Probably the best way I can do it, I'll put the backing track on again. I'll have a play through with the pentatonic scale. I'll just have a quick noodle around, improvising. And then I'll do a similar thing on the second repeat. I'll change it to the blues scale and we can see how that extra note changes the, um, the flavour of what I'm doing. So I'll play along with that and I will, as always, include the resources you need in the description. So I'll start off with the pentatonic for the first 12 bars and then in the second 12 bars I'll start using that extra note. <laughs> So again, it wasn't it wasn't a brilliant piece of music. It's just something that just came off the top of my head. Just wanted to try and give you, hopefully, you could hear a little bit of the extra flavour of that note added. I say I don't use it all the time. That's not a hard and fast rule. Use it as much as you want to use it. Use it whenever it sounds good to your ear. Um, but treat it as a different scale. Don't replace what you've already learnt with it. Think of the fact now. Okay, I've got the e pentatonic scale, and now I've got a blues scale as well. The blue scale, as the name suggests, usually works well in blues music, if that's the feel you're going for. If you try and play it in different styles of music, it doesn't sound brilliant because it just makes whatever you're trying to play sound like blues. As a, as a similar, as an example, let's imagine you know, you're know cooking a, cooking a dish of food, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to make, um, a soup or a casserole or a, you know, just a, a breakfast or whatever, you tip a lot of curry powder onto it, it's always going to taste of curry. The blues note and playing that way will always make it sound bluesy. If you want to sound bluesy, brilliant. If you're not aiming to sound bluesy, if you're playing a different style of music, perhaps it's not the right scale. That's just two different scales. There's loads of different scales that have got loads of different flavours, just like the spices when you're cooking, to use the same example. Uh, but because I've used the example of a, a 12 bar blues, I thought I'd just finish up with um, you know, adding the bit of uh, blues to the 12 bar. So hopefully this series has been useful to you. Hopefully you've been able to um, get a bit of um, a bit further on towards learning lead guitar and improvising. If it hasn't been useful, if there's something that you think's missing, let me know. I'll see if I can cover it. it um, this was the way that I learned originally. It worked for me and I've tried to adapt it a little bit in modern times and make it work a little bit better hopefully for you so with everything that we've done you should be able to fly off into the horizon with your lead guitar technique playing I'll probably do some more series in the future about um, more advanced lead guitar techniques we've literally just scratched the surface but um, just to get you going with doing your own thing rather than following music hopefully it's been useful enjoy <laughs>